Good morning and welcome to you all as we share together uh, today on the first day of the week. As you navigate life and you go through different stages of your life, you understand that you change and that life changes you. This world changes you in many ways. But the thing is that God never changes throughout what he does and what he says and what he promises. These are unchanging. But in our own lives, maybe we change the way that we understand what he says. Maybe we come to a better understanding of what he is saying to us and how he's saying it to us. And the shepherds, uh, over the last number of weeks and other going forward, are looking at what God says about shepherds, what he says about deacons, in order that maybe people at a stage in their life may be able to think about, are they willing to serve in such a role? Also, we're looking at how each and every one of us can have the attributes that a shepherd has because we know that those are things that we are all one in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 11 through 13 reads, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of stature of the fullness of Christ. And this is one thing that the shepherds particularly agree and have one mind of, that we equip people that meet together here on a regular basis at this congregation to mature in the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. To be able to measure to the statue of, his, of this Christ and to mature in these things in order that we may be ready when this world challenges us about what we believe. So as we move through our lives and we are challenged by the things that we go through every day, that the knowledge that we have in Jesus Christ and the maturity that we have in Jesus Christ and the understanding that we are all one in Jesus Christ helps us to navigate and to overcome the things that the world throws at us. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17, we use this as our, uh, our, uh, pass our, our scripture to understand that all things that God has said to us, in verse 16 says, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So it's not an interpretation of what we say, it's not an interpretation of what the deacons or the shepherds put into a lesson or a series of lessons, but it is profitable because it is breathed by God for us. It is God's word. It is God's wisdom that we use in order to train in righteousness all people that meet here in this place on a regular basis. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verses 1 through 11, this will be our last verse uh, for now. And it says there, So exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising over oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief uh, shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders, clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he will exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, 
who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So if we can have a couple of microphones uh, at the back. So now is a time of discussion where we will... Uh, Anybody can speak uh, within this forum, and it's a time of encouragement uh, to get people's thoughts and maybe um, to think about the things that we've uh, opened in God's Word earlier on, but more can be talked about. The aim is to think about how we serve. How do we serve one another, the community, and is, am I doing what I can do? Um, and why, what am I using to do that? And whose responsibility is it to do that? Because sometimes we think, uh, well, there's somebody um, that might be better at it or maybe we, we feel could do a better job than us, so we just don't do anything. We allow others to do it. But we see, I think, it's fairly clear in God's word that um, we can all have a part to play in and to uh, fulfil uh, in the body of Christ, and wherever we meet. So, in thinking about these things, and um, as we think about uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and what it says there about the unity of the faith and how there were different, uh, and there are different people uh, involved here, um, and the equipping of the, of the saints for the work of ministry, um, it's for the building up of the body of Christ. And I think. What are some of the things that you can think can build up the body of Christ? <laughs> uh, Phyllis, somebody with a microphone to Phyllis. Showing love. Showing love, yes. Even though people are nasty, yes. don't answer back, Yes. but be kind to them. But don't look as though you're reprimanding them. Yes, yes. Just agree, you know, I'm sorry if I upset you. Okay, let's 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 qualify this a little bit. This is not love that you've come up with. This is the love of Jesus, because what what is the difference between our love, the way that we perceive love, and the love that Jesus has for us, and asks us to be? Uh, Rob, yeah, I'm asking you. <laughs> yes, it's the biggest part. Yeah, it's unconditional. Um, you know, as humans, we are very we are uh, uh, we are very much upon conditions. Mm. If somebody's nice to me, well, it makes it easier to love them. If somebody's not so nice to me, well, why should I bother with them? Yeah, and this is what the world tells us, doesn't it? Um, you know, it's life's too short to uh, to have anything to do with uh, people that uh, are not the same as me. Mm. But the thing is that Jesus, uh, how did he display that love to all of us? It's an easy one. Anybody can get this one, hopefully. Giving his life. Giving his life. <laughs> Very good. But he didn't just give it his life to those that loved him. It wasn't just the people that were following him around and were believing in him and they were, were, the, were, you know, they were dedicating their lives to him, but he was giving his life for all men whether they believed or didn't believe. So giving them an opportunity to believe or not to believe. To be, but they were all loved in the same way. They weren't loved less because they didn't believe. And others weren't loved more. But he loved all men in order that he wanted them to be saved. So that gives us a little bit of an idea of what Phyllis is talking about, is that we are loving unconditionally with people. That when we share the knowledge of Jesus, the good news, the great news of him, the love that he has shown us, it should be unconditional to who it goes to. We don't select people to hear the gospel. We should be willing to share that with all people. And that's somewhat um, of, of ways that we can look at how we talk to one another, how we equip one another, how we care for one another, how we look out to the interests of others above our own, how we go into the community and we share with others. So 
what else can we do to build each other up? Encouragement, yes. Yep. So how would you do that? They didn't feel they were capable of doing anything. Yes. And I was able to say to them at the time, well, what are we doing right now? You're serving us a beautiful morning tea. You're given to hospitality. You've opened your home. Mm -hmm. And just encourage them, where mm -hmm. even when they think they've got nothing. Mm -hmm. Find something really nice that you can say to build yes. them up. Yeah, because... The thing is, the understanding is that all things we do, we do to God. So we can't, we can't compartmentalise life and say, well, we're working today, so I'm not doing this part for God, I'm doing this for me and my family. Everything we do, we do for the Lord. It's like this holistic life that we live in. Nothing is outside of that sphere, outside of that life in Christ. All things that we do, so that's why we have to be careful the way that we do things and, who, and how we're doing things. And this morning I would like you to bring a little bit of encouragement to a couple of the deacons who are going to give a little bit of an insight into what they do in the congregation in a, in a minute. And I'll talk a little bit about my experiences as a shepherd here um, over the period of time that we've done. So we're going to ask... Um, We'll go with Brett first because B comes before W. So we'll go with Brett and um, he'll, for, for a couple of minutes here, he'll just talk about some of the things. A lot of you will know the things he does, but um, it's good to encourage people, particularly those people that have been uh, in these roles and working uh, at them for the congregation. So Brett, if you would just... Morning, everyone. You would think I'd know what I do off by heart, wouldn't you? But maybe not, just in case. Um, as has been said probably a number of times this morning, uh, we all have different abilities from our Father, uh, but we work together as one in the body, in the family. I think that being a deacon is pretty much about serving. I mean, if you look at... Uh, the qualifications for a deacon in 1 Timothy 3, etc. I mean, serve turns up there, and we've been talking about it today. It's uh, really part of our lives. It's part of our Christian life. But a deacon is also pretty a lot about serving. Each one of you, serving each one of you, serving others more widely, under the guidance of the elders at times, and of course, most, and most importantly, serving our Father in all we say and do which all sounds very much about what being a follower of Jesus is about. Now you probably uh, know that I'm a rather shy person, uh, quiet, I'm a background sort of guy and always have been. I need to work on that, but I suspect at my age that's probably not going to change a great deal now, but you never know. Uh, but God has given me and he's given all of us certain skills that are useful in his service. Skills that others might not have, that I have, and others have abilities that I don't have. We all work together, as we've said. Some of the things I've had in my life, largely due to my work commitments, is things like knowing how government works, business, accounting, tax, contracts, things like that. I can also sit at a computer for a long time and work through tedious processes, forms, websites and all that sort of gear. I might be even said to be overly meticulous about it, to which, which I will not deny, because uh, I can't go without knowing the nth degree of things. So I'm pretty suited to doing government compliance and financial sort of things, dealing with paperwork, and, you know, in terms of the uh, congregation here, what I do is I look after the church accounts, uh, payments, you know, to support the workers, the building here, 
and other things, I coordinate funds we get from the association, and also probably more and more as time has gone by, because uh, I've been doing this for about 40 years, uh, it's more and more the government requires us to do different things. So uh, regulatory requirements, for instance, to get tax-free status so we don't pay tax. We get GST refunds. We have to provide reports to the Australian Charities and Not-for-Profit Commission so that we can get uh, tax-free status. We have, there's all sorts of things. There's external contact standards. There's rules of the association. There's child safe organisations. There's JobKeeper program during COVID, which I had to organise, and uh, we qualified for a part of that. Then I do some other things around the edges about, I have been looking at the address list and the online list for a while. But I often feel the need to do more in other areas of service. But what I have to come back to sometimes is that me doing these sorts of things frees up other people to use their skills and abilities doing other things. Because I'm human, I feel that what I do can, is pretty boring sometimes. It's not the greatest fun, but uh, the bottom line is it has to be done. And I'd like to think that since I've retired, I, I do a few more other things, but I still need, I would like to get into more different areas, especially serving my brothers and sisters individually. So that's uh, a bit of my take on from the administrative side, I suppose. Uh, but as I said, we've all got roles and what I do, uh, other people may not be able to do and there's things they do I can't do. Thanks. Oh, Jeff. Was there a question, was it? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you enjoy it? Uh, I'd say after, after all these years, I wouldn't say that I enjoy it, but... I reconcile myself with the fact that it has to be done and there's never, um, we've uh, asked for other people to be involved in that over the years, but uh, haven't been knocked over in the rush. In fact, I can't remember anybody. Um, so, you know, some things you've got to do what you've got to do. Thank you. Okay. Just before you leave, Brett, um, I do see your role as a very important one, you know, the compliance aspects of any organisation, um, you know, the paperwork is tedious, but it would be good in a way if there was someone else, and I use the word very loosely, who, you know, is a boring person. <laughs> Not saying that you're boring, but you did use that expression, that be good way. if you could um, bring someone alongside you and teach them the ropes. Yeah, that would be ideal. Um, yeah, you can, you can anyone any time can see me about that because I'm only too willing to have somebody uh, learn the ropes. But uh, yeah, we'll see. But yeah, you've got to have a certain personality to do this sort of thing. So it's not for everybody because you, you really do have to be fairly meticulous because uh, and know how government works, which I worked in for thirty five years because. Uh, there's some ways to do things and some ways not to do things that make it easier or harder for yourself. Yeah, thank you to Brett. And um, well, the thing is that why we're talking about these things is somebody might think, oh, well, I might be able to assist Brett in doing those sorts of things. Um, and uh, we might be able to, um, might be interested in those. But might the shutters went down when we, when he was talking because I those sorts of things, government things, yeah, I'm not interested in at all. But but the fact is, what I am interested in is the heart behind that. He does it because he loves God, and he does it because he loves people, and he loves the people of this congregation. He doesn't want to burden them with those problems. And not only does he do it for the congregation, but he also does it for people uh, in the congregation who are going into retirement or they're having troubles with their finances. Brett has been always willing to, to look through those things and give them advice about how to deal between himself and Roger, who seem to be a good team. Centrelink and tax department are not always easy places to navigate. And this, they have a talent for this. You know, and, and I don't. And many of us don't. And that's where they're able to do it. And sometimes we have to do things um, that aren't always easy for us. And 
Um, we can't just wait until something's there for us to be to do because we're happy to do it. Uh, we need to start uh, looking at how we can assist others and help others uh, in the body to start with. Wayne? Well, I know what I do off by heart because I don't do a lot. Um, so it's easy. <laughs> Um, just from what's been said earlier, I just want to say when I became a deacon, I don't know how many years ago it was, but it was a deacon for the building, uh, and there was a lot of guilt. Uh, I suffered a lot of guilt at that time for you know a year or two because I wasn't doing all the things that I could do. There was a lot of stuff to do. Uh, Ian does you know ten times more than I do, and Paul does more than I do in regards to the building. Uh, so but I just want to say if you're thinking about becoming a deacon but you don't think you can put the effort in or you, you know don't have the time or whatever i would encourage you to do so um it's still a good idea because it changes over time you find out you know what you are good at and what you specialize in and it, it changes and uh, you can do many uh, good things but i just want to say there are a lot of people who aren't deacons uh, that are doing quite a lot uh, lots of things in the church which is great everything i do um as a deacon is limited uh, by my family life so i work full time and we have a large family and the kids are our priority um, we have lots of little kids that we try and bring up in the church and we uh, want them to experience christianity and the classrooms the bible classes and those sorts of things so that's important to us and uh, i'm proud that they're all here today um, I'm proud that all my big kids are here today. Uh, it was Ryan and Rachel and Ben and Sam's here. Um, that's important to me. That's always been uh, important to me. And uh, I often tell the kids, you know, they ask me, what do you want for your birthday? And I'll say, well, I just want you to come to service on Sunday. Uh, that's because it's important to me. But they buy me presents anyway, so, which is good. So with all that, that's limited. You know, that limits what I can do. Um, you know, my, my family life. But that, that, if you're limited to time, don't worry about it. You can still help out where you can. It's not like you have to give you 100% to, you know, to time to the church. You just do what you can. Uh, so I would encourage anyone think of become a deacon uh, to uh, do so. Uh, things I do, I uh, order all the perishables. Uh, so your toilet paper and your hand towels, your plates and knives and forks and cups. I go down to this place in Belcatter and I order them all in bulk. Uh, you might have noticed we're changing from plastic to paper and uh, wood, uh, going green. Unfortunately, it costs about three times as much uh, to be green, but we're, we're slowly getting there. Um, the Lord's Supper emblems, I order those. I get the uh, cups from Koorong, which uh, Jersey's told me they don't sell anymore, so uh, we may have to uh, resort to using our glass, reusable glass ones and washing those, but that's probably a good thing. And you might also be interested to know that I uh, get the bread from a company over east, which is a Jewish company that uh, produces Passover material. So um, I'm, I'm happy about that because I know that it's unleavened bread uh, that we use here. Apart from that, um, I suppose, uh, you know, as a deacon, my concern is always is encouraging the brethren. Uh, so, you know, recently we've been having the sausage sizzles so that uh, as, uh, seems to be quite good, you know, reinstating the luncheon and uh, having the sausages, I think is a good thing. Doing things after service uh, is a, uh, a good idea, I think. Um, but apart from that, I can't think of anything else that, uh, oh, except for Bunbury, yes. Um, in fact, I want to use this as an opportunity to, uh, for anyone yeah, who is able to preach or teach, um, song lead or do Lord's Supper talks at Bunbury, if you can ever get the chance to go down there and help them out, it would be a uh, good thing. I'm closely linked to it, to the Bunbury Church, because my mum and dad are down there and they were taking me down there when I was a toddler. So that church has been there for decades and decades and they've had many challenges. Um, they, they're isolated, um, but they have, you know, stuck to the teaching the truth down there and, uh, you know, they uh, have... I just think it's wonderful that there is a church in Bunbury. Recently, they, they're talking that, about how long they're going to be able to continue for uh, because there's sort of main, mainly three 
guys there that do the service and quite often some one or two or none are there um, and because of illness and old age they're not too sure how long uh, they're going to be able to keep going um, half of their sermons are now on t you know they watch videos uh, just to try and reduce the workload so um, whenever i can i go down if i preach here then i always go down and preach there uh, or go down and do some song leading or something like that so if anyone ever has the opportunity, I'd yeah, encourage you to uh, just occasionally yeah, go down there. I know Eddie's done it. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you very much. No questions for Wayne? Nobody wants to know about why we don't get splinters from wooden forks? I've thought about that. But anyway, uh, oh, there is one. Well... Um, yes, I appreciate and really appreciate the fact that um, Wayne loves to see his physical family here mm. and it's that same feeling of gratitude that I love to see my spiritual family here. Every week it means a lot to me and quite often there are people who are unable to do a lot in the church. There are elderly people. There are families um, with young children, but just the fact that they're here is so, so encouraging for me. So every time I see one of my spiritual family within the church worshipping God with me, it's a great encouragement. And I'd like to encourage all those that are still doing Zoom or YouTube now, sorry, YouTube, Please come. It's wonderful to see people face to face. Mm. Thank you. But isn't that the thing is that when we come together on the first day of the week, it is some participation together. It's not here to come and just sit in a seat and to warm the seat. We come to participate in one another's lives. You know, it might, it's as simple as being here because the encouragement that comes from being together is seeing people of like mind making the effort to share together on the first day of the week as we're unified in faith. And that's what it's about. It's about our life together in Christ. And we get encouragement in many, many different ways. And Brett and, uh, and Wayne and Rog and, and the other deacons are people that are spirit-filled. We see in Acts chapter 6 where it talks about those people that were chosen and they are just told to, uh, to look for people that could fill those positions. Now, through the things they were saying, it may be uh, they think they're menial things, but they're spirit-filled activities that they're doing for other people. And here we have Wayne with a family that's bigger than, I don't know, yeah, it's huge, starting on his second lot, um, because of, he's got the first lot going well, so he's starting on a second lot. But what's he doing is he's sharing the spirit that he has from God with them. And likewise, we do with the young people that come to the congregation, the people that we have in our midst, we should be taking that opportunity to share with them and serve them. Serve them by maybe just talking to them, saying hello. You know, when we say hello to somebody, that means that you mean something to me because I'm not just passing you by. You're important. And we are all important in the Lord's Church and the, the, the congregation that meets here. And the idea is to understand that, that um, when we looked at First Peter chapter 5 verse, it's talking about humility. It's talking about the way that we do things. We're not going around blowing our trumpets about what we do. We're, not, we're just doing things quietly. And in this congregation, there are many people doing things very quietly that are encouraging one another and continue to build up the brethren. But we're saying to all of us, how can I do more? How can I? Where am I in my life? Where am I spiritually? What can I share with others? You know, we've been through a, a really and everybody in this world has been through an isolation period. We've come out of isolation period and we're sort of still in that period. We're out of it, but we're in it still. We're still not, we're getting back there slowly. You know, Wayne and his family uh, uh, and, and extended family, uh, wherever they are, um, are organising activities for people to come out of that isolation 
and to be more together and build relationships again. These are the things that we should be thinking about. These are the things that we should be trying to do. And that's what people like Wayne and Brett and Roger and, and others, uh, Damien, you know, lots and lots of different people are, are striving to do these things and to build a, a, each other up. Well, I've heard it say many times, what do the elders do? I don't know how to take that question. Are they, in some ways, if I was negative, I'd say, well, that, that connotation is, are they doing anything? Um, and I suppose the, what, the, the passage of scriptures that I, that I chose this morning were sort of a thing that we, we, we really are firmly founded on. That the things that God has breathed and has given to us through his word and have been handed down to us, these are the things that we want to equip one another with. That the work of the ministry in, in, in Ephesians 4 again, for the building up of the body of Christ, trying to attain the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of his Son, Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You know, lots of places have mission statements. Lots of places have aims. If we were to really, if you wanted one of those, that would be it. That God's truth is taught, that God's truth is encouraged, that God's truth is learned, that it's, it's, it's put into action so that it builds one another up. That Jesus is part of the, the, the centre of that, that we mature in that, and that we're trying to live and to grow into the, into the grace and knowledge of him, the fullness of Christ. All those things that Jesus showed us through the love that Phyllis told, started us out with. All those things that where there's, there's, there's uh, equal, equalness, inequality. There is no, the people are equal and that we have all these different things to share. It's been, I think, uh, a, a number of years that we've been serving as shepherds and for myself it's been very interesting things that I have never experienced in my life ever before. From the, it's from birth till death and in between. I've been asked to be part of people's lives and to share with them in all different circumstances. And what I can see from the scriptures is that that seems to be something that a shepherd or a an elder, if you want to call him that, is willing to do. And I'll tell you what, some of those times have been the most traumatic times of my life. But some of them have been the most blessed times of my life. And even though it's been traumatic, and I've cried with people, I've seen that I've been a help to somebody. Within two months of us, Becoming shepherds, we were, Peter knocked at my door and we went off to Shana's house to tell her that her husband had passed away. It shouldn't happen. And I wasn't expecting to do that. But through that, I saw that Peter loved me because he was willing to support me. It was a traumatic time. It was something I'll never forget. And the th fact was that we were able to help Shana and the children for through, for through so many things. And it saddens me to, we still have contact with Shana, but we don't see her very often, but some things in life, people don't get over always. But we need to continue to share with her and to love her and to care for her. And we don't know what is planned for her in the future. People have been, over the years, very, very kind. And supporting me, encouraging me in the things that I do. The things that I love to do. And I've been blessed by God to be, have the opportunity to serve uh, in a part-time role, but also in a full-time role f for many years. 
I've never worried about money. I've never worried about where it's coming from or where it's going. God has seen and has a plan for me and I've just let him have it. And the thing is that you, there are people in this congregation that can be and serve as shepherds and there will be days where it will be very hard. But there will be many, many more days that are very, very blessed. I've travelled with Peter and with Ian to other countries in very difficult circumstances. But great blessings, those things I'll never forget. I've sat with men and we've discussed very, very difficult understandings from God's word. And sometimes we haven't come to any conclusion. But we've sat and we keep sitting and we keep talking and we do it in such a way that is loving to one another and loving and kind to each other. Even though sometimes we might, we might be trying to get across a point that we, we think is a conclusion to the question and then somebody else has something else. But we can learn and we need to learn from this that we can, we can have differences of opinions. We can see things differently, but we can continue to love and care for one another and encourage one another in all things. We need to have shepherds. We need to have deacons. We need to have people active in the congregation. We need to have lots and lots of different people, men and women, doing their best to share with one another the hope that they have in Jesus. We hope and pray that, uh, that this will happen and that people will aspire to, this, to do these things. Not only will there be men aspiring to take on these roles, but women aspiring to be and continue in the work that they do. The women in this room have huge faith. They have very strong faith. They have very great knowledge of Jesus. And we're very blessed to have them. And we continue, they do great things in his name. So we're going to be thinking about these things over the next number of weeks and understanding a little bit more about that. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to understand some of the things that we do as a congregation together. And we do them together. And we do them on behalf of each other. And we share together for the love of well, Oh, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank the shepherds for their many, many years of service. Um, I have been in congregations, <clears throat> excuse me, that did not have uh, shepherds and there has been terrible discord, disruption, um, all sorts of horrible things. Um, and I know the job that they've had to do has been very, very hard, but the... the the purpose and the reason is to protect us, the sheep, uh, the members of the congregation. And I really, really feel very safe at Malaga with the men, the men that are shepherds. And I would like to encourage those that I have mentioned to, to become shepherds. Um, because being safe and having all that stuff being taken care of has given me the opportunity to grow. And I could not have grown the way, spiritually grow, the way that I have if I had been exposed to a lot of that other stuff. So thank you. And also it has given me the opportunity to handle what I've had to handle in my life, um, being at peace within the congregation. So thank you, shepherds. Thank you, deacons, and please, those who um, aspire, consider it very seriously. It's an important, important job. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, I was brought up in the church. I went to the Subiaca Church of Christ first, 
Then I changed to the um, Church of Christ at City Beach, and then we moved here after the, the property was sold. Um, so um, as a child, I went to the Sunday school, and that's where my <clears throat> faith started. Um, I, lis I listened and I learned, and um, I was baptised because I saw, from what I heard, I read that it was the only life I could possibly want. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of distractions in the world, which I don't mind um, going to, because I can then talk to people about my faith and point out things in the Bible to them that they probably never hear. Mm. Um, I went nursing, and um, I've still got nursing friends that um, contact me. Um, and I encourage them, and they're they're also Christians. They don't live near me, but they're also Christians, and they keep in touch with me because they know I'm a Christian. So it's a real bond that we have mm. with each other, mm. and you know we have Christ for that. Mm. It's a wonderful thing to be that mm. part of the family. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I think we need to uh, to really think about the way that we encourage one another. And of course, having visitors like the Barkholtz family here today, um, that encourages us greatly. You know, we we live in a, a place that's, uh, and our youth are saying now at the moment that they feel very, very isolated from everybody else. You know, we, you know, where are we? You know, and we, oh, you know, we've lived here for so long that we just we just take it for granted that we're isolated. But the fact is, we are isolated from believers in a lot of ways, um, and we can't just go, you know, down the street and see somebody. Um, but the fact is, when, when, when you visit us, when others visit us, it means so much to us. You know, it, it means, yeah, <laughs> you know, th there are other people out there. You know, <laughs> when I was growing up, I was a teenager and, uh, and we were at Embleton and, of course, all the Harrises and the Prittos had, had deserted us. Um, but <laughs> they'd gone to their bush, sea ch their, their tree change and we were there and it was just my, my brothers and I and um, maybe a couple of others and we just thought, where are all the kids? There is nobody. And uh, we, we did have our eyes opened uh, through um, the people at Riverton and the youth group that they had because they had a youth group and there was quite a number of them. There was 30 or so of them. And we didn't know nothing about that. We had no idea. But the fact is when we have visitors, when we have people come, it opens our eyes to the love that you have for God and it shows us also that, you know, we're not alone, you know, because sometimes we do we do feel that way, uh, that we feel that we're alone. But um, thank you all for being here and sharing with us at this time. Uh, Brett's going to uh, just close us uh, in a word of prayer on the announcements and the giving, so um, we'll give over to him. Thank you.